Here's the uncomfortable truth. ChatGPT 5.1 already thinks better, remembers more, and does more than most people realize. And ChatGPT 6 is the next step in that same direction, which Sam claimed will give a glimpse of AGI. So today, let's break down five concrete world shifts it will trigger. But first, let's have a quick look at what the previous versions have already put in place. Before GPT-6, the world GPT-5 already built. In August 2025, OpenAI launched GPT-5 and described it as our best AI system yet. A significant leap in intelligence over previous models with state-of-the-art performance in coding, math, writing, health, and more. In the developer-focused article, OpenAI calls GPT-5 the strongest coding model we've ever released saying it outperforms their earlier O3 model on coding benchmarks and is fine-tuned for agentic coding products like Cursor, Windsurf, GitHub Copilot, and Codex CLI. The official models page reinforces that GPT-5 is their best model for coding and agentic tasks, with configurable reasoning effort depending on how hard the problem is. Then in November 2025, OpenAI rolled out GPT-5.1, describing it as a smarter and more conversational chat GPT. The GPT 5.1 developer post explains that it brings adaptive reasoning, using fewer thinking tokens on easy tasks and more on hard ones, extended prompt caching up to 24 hours, and new tools like an apply patch code editor and a shell tool for long-running, agentic workflows. On top of model intelligence, OpenAI has already given chat GPT something like a long-term memory. In a February 2024 post updated in April 2025, they explain that ChatGPT's memory now works in two ways, saved memories you ask it to keep and chat history insights it pulls from all your past conversations with full controls to view, edit, or turn this off. Then there is Tasks, a beta feature that lets ChatGPT run automated prompts and proactively reach out to you with repetitive tasks like briefing the news or practicing a new language daily. Tech coverage outlets praised tasks as a new beta feature that allows ChatGPT to handle reminders and to-dos, pushing it toward a true digital assistant rather than just a real-time chatbot. So when we say ChatGPT6, we are not talking about a slightly smarter Q and A bot. We are talking about the next model arriving on top of GPT-5 as a state-of-the-art engine for coding and reasoning. GPT-5.1 as a faster, more steerable, more conversational version of that engine. A chat GPT that already has long-term memory and tasks that let it run things for you on a schedule. That is the starting line for GPT-6. The first world shift, an AI that actually knows you. The first way GPT-6 changes the world is that it turns good autocomplete into something closer to a second brain that actually knows you. Today, ChatGPT's memory system is already designed to store helpful information about you across chats, things like preferences, ongoing projects, and personal details you explicitly tell it to remember, and use that automatically in the future. That same blog also makes it clear that, by default, memory in 2025 works in two ways saved memories you asked it to keep, and insights harvested from past chat history, which are used to make later responses more relevant. You can turn this off, use temporary chats, or ask, what do you remember about me? But the design direction is obvious. The AI is meant to build a long-term model of you. Independent testers have described this as chat GPT keeping a memory dossier, a growing picture of who you are based on repeated conversations. Now imagine GPT-6 on top of GPT-5.1. It will not just remember a few facts, it will remember your patterns, which rabbit holes you fall into, and how you like bad news framed, or even what you tend to say yes to. On the plus side, that means less friction. You re-explain yourself less. More relevant suggestions, reminders, and content, and a real personal operating system feeling, especially when memory is shared across devices and apps. On the dark side, that also means the system becomes more persuasive because it knows your weak spots. It becomes harder to switch away because your life history now lives inside this ecosystem. And subtle nudges, what it suggests first, what it hides, what it downplays, start to matter a lot more. 
GPT-6 is likely to make this memory richer and more context-aware, especially when combined with projects, files, and integrations. An AI starts feeling like an entity that genuinely knows you over time. The second world shift from chatbot to full-time agent. This shift is about agency, and we are already halfway there. With the Tasks feature, OpenAI lets you create schedules like Brief me on AI news every afternoon or Remind me about my mom's birthday, and ChatGPT will run those automatically and notify you when they are done. This lifts ChatGPT surpasses some well-known digital assistants like Siri or Google Assistant because it can now handle recurring reminders and to-dos, not just answer in real time. On the developer side, GPT-5 and GPT-5.1 have been explicitly marketed as models for agentic tasks, meaning they are built to call tools, run code, use browsers and APIs, and work across multiple steps, not just produce one reply. The GPT-5.1 developer launch doubles down on this, talking about adaptive reasoning and better performance on long-running, tool-heavy workflows, like autonomous coding agents. On top of that, OpenAI has rolled out real-time and next-generation audio models that let developers build low-latency voice agents that can talk, listen, and react, almost like a human assistant. The real-time docs describe models that natively handle text and audio streams and can be hooked into phone calls and apps. Put this together and you can see the shape of GPT-6. Instead of, I ask a question, it answers. You will have scrape these 20 websites and alert me if anything changes in their pricing or terms. GPT-6 will not just be your chat partner. It will be your background process. And this is where your relationship with the AI becomes less like chatting and more like managing a team of invisible interns that never sleep. World shift number three, one person with GPT-6 versus an entire team. This shift is actually a massive economic leverage. GPT-5 already raised the bar here. In the developer blog and model docs, OpenAI positions GPT-5 as a true coding collaborator that can produce high-quality code, fix bugs, and understand complex code bases with state-of-the-art performance on important benchmarks. External write-ups show GPT-5 being used in real development environments, and Microsoft highlights GPT-5 as a model developers can plug directly into their tools on day one. GPT-5.1 then improves speed, steerability, and coding personality, working closely with startups like Cursor and Warp to make it better at multi-step coding tasks and code editing. On the reasoning side, OpenAI's O-Series thinking models introduced large-scale reinforcement learning to force the model to reason step-by-step -step before answering, significantly improving performance on math and coding benchmarks. Now imagine GPT-6, combining GPT-5.1's adaptive reasoning and speed, O-style deliberate thinking, and all the agent tools around it. Suddenly, a single person can prototype and ship a full app, UX copy, front-end, back-end, docs, marketing page, run a content operation, research, scripting, editing, thumbnails, uploads, all orchestrated. Do analyses that used to require a team, reading hundreds of pages, building models, writing summaries, drafting recommendations. The key point is not no more jobs. The key point is massive gap between people who learn to orchestrate GPT-6 and people who do not. Think of GPT-6 as an amplifier. If you bring skills, taste, and direction to the table, GPT-6 turns that into output at a scale that used to need an entire team. World shift number four. AI inside every interface. This is what happens when GPT-6 is no longer just a website you open, but an invisible layer inside everything you use. On the open AI side, the real-time and audio tools are already designed to be embedded directly into apps, websites, and devices. The models catalog lists GPT-5.1 as a multimodal model for logic-heavy, multi-step tasks. And Microsoft's Azure model catalog confirms that GPT-5.1 is available as a first-class model in their AI foundry. At the same time, productivity tools like Zoom are already reporting that AI companions and virtual agents are a key growth area, embedding AI directly into calls, chats, and workflows instead of keeping it separate. So we are heading toward a world where 
In your browser, GPT-6 summarizes pages, flags, scams, and compares options as you scroll. In your documents, it helps structure arguments, verify claims, and suggest visuals in real time. In your meetings, it listens, takes notes, extracts decisions, and pushes action items into your task manager. In your devices, it handles voice commands in your car, on your earbuds, and on your TV. You will not think, I am using ChatGPT now. You will think, I am just doing my work, while GPT-6 is quietly mediating almost everything. That changes the internet itself, and instead of manually visiting 10 websites and reading them, you'll just need to say, compare the best three options for me, make a recommendation, and then draft the email I should send. Search algorithms, advertising, social feeds, all of it starts flowing through agents that decide what to surface, what to compress, and what to ignore. The fourth world shift is that GPT-6 becomes infrastructure. It is no longer an app you open. It is the invisible layer through which you experience almost everything else online. And the biggest world shift, politics, power, and AI governance. Governments and regulators have already stopped treating frontier models as toys. In June 2025, a working group commissioned by California's governor published the California Report on Frontier AI Policy, warning that advanced models pose substantial risks, including possible irreversible harms if misused in areas like cybersecurity and biological threats. Times coverage emphasized that the report calls for serious governance and risk management frameworks, not just voluntary guidelines. At the global level, the ITU's annual AI Governance Report 2025 talks about autonomous agents, verification systems, and socioeconomic disruption as core issues that governments must address as AI systems become more capable and embedded. Policy think tanks like Georgetown's CSET are publishing frameworks on frontier AI governance, exploring options like licensing, mandatory testing, transparency, and liability for advanced systems. And we are already seeing specific laws aimed at AI chatbots. California's new companion chatbot law, for example, imposes requirements around transparency reminders that users are talking to AI, and safeguards for minors in emotionally manipulative or sensitive contexts. Another bill that would have heavily restricted minors' access to AI chatbots was vetoed, which shows how contested this space already is. Now drop GPT-6 into that environment. You'll get hyper-personalized persuasion at scale, political messages tailored to each person's fears, hopes, and biases generated automatically. Synthetic influencers, AI-generated commentators that publish 24-7, never tire, and can target specific demographics with custom narratives. Automated lobbying and policy work, agents that read draft bills, generate amendments, and coordinate campaigns faster than human teams. There are three broad futures people talk about. Heavy regulation, licenses, independent audits, strict limits on certain uses like fully autonomous political bots. Platform self-governance, labs like OpenAI, Anthropic, and Google set their own policies, but also control the knobs. Fragmented chaos, some jurisdictions clamp down hard, others become AI Wild West zones. GPT-6 will be powerful enough that states, corporations, and wealthy actors will put serious resources into using it as leverage for economics, diplomacy, and information campaigns. The fifth world shift is that politics stops being only about what humans say and do, and starts being about who has the best AI systems on their side. How to live in a GPT-6 world. Let's put this together. We looked at five big ways GPT-6 is likely to change the world. It will act like an AI that deeply understands you through long-term memory and personalization. It will move from an on-screen chatbot to a full-time agent running tasks in the background. It will give individuals and tiny teams unfair leverage, rivaling entire departments. It will turn into an invisible interface layer embedded inside almost every tool and device you use. And it will reshape politics and power because advanced AI becomes part of the infrastructure of persuasion and governance. So what should we actually do about it? Here's a simple SBAC framework for that. First, skill. Learn to work with agents and workflows, not just prompts. 
the people who win in a GPT-6 world will not be the ones who write the prettiest question. They will be the ones who can say, here is the outcome, here are the tools, now run this for me every week. Second, boundaries. Be deliberate about what you let your AI remember. Use settings, temporary chats, and data controls. Forgetting is not just a bug to fix, it is a feature you should actively use. Third, awareness. Pay attention to who owns the systems you rely on. Different labs and platforms will have different incentives, safety levels, and policies. If your daily life is mediated by one company's AI, that is a real dependency. Fourth, community. Keep investing in human networks, friends, collaborators, audiences that do not depend on any single platform. AI can amplify you, but it should not be the only thing holding your world together. GPT-6 will not change the world just because it scores a few more points on benchmarks. It will change the world because it will be everywhere, understand us, and quietly run across all of our systems. So the real question is not what will GPT-6 do. It's how prepared you are to live in that world on purpose instead of drifting into it by accident. If you made it this far, let us know what you think in the comment section below. And for more interesting topics, make sure you watch the recommended video on the screen right now. Thanks for watching.